Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to The Wrap. This is episode number, twi- no, number 30. It's Thursday, <laughs> February 9th. You slipped me up on that one here, Anna. <laughs> this is a show rounding up all things Zwift from the last week. Racing, events, tech, fashion, etc. We are live on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. In this episode of The Wrap, we actually are adding something that just came out in in the last uh, day or so to the program that wasn't planned but wahoo v6 race mode is this a game changer we're going to be talking about what went down in the team time trial whether or not two races is too much or just right um it seems that all the pacer bots uh have their own personality their own i don't know what are we going to call this exactly out there that's been out in some, some hilarious stuff out on Instagram? There was a Forbes interview with the CEO, Eric Min of Zwift. And in there, he talked about maybe having 10 million subscribers one day as well as a couple, as well as a couple other things. We'll take a little bit of a look at that as well as how does the weather work on Zwift and who was the game master and what did he do exactly? All that's coming up, and of course, we've got a special guest with us today. It is going to be Barney, James Barnes, a man out of South Africa. He's riding for Next Esports, but he's also riding for South Africa in the World Championships, and I think he's a contender. He'll be joining us today. Of course, we've got our jersey picks. If you didn't check that out already at the beginning of the broadcast, you can go ahead and we'll show you them later today. Check that out. Give us a rating on them. We also got the garage pick. Anna. A lot going on, but always at the top of the hour, we talk about what we've been doing and how we've been training or suffering or winning out on Zwift. I'm not, last week you were a lot, ha- like, you were like, here we go. Oh no, two weeks ago, you're we like, we won. We won. What is going on, Anna? Oh, yeah. No. First, I want to say, though, wow, the chat has lit up immediately with how great that new intro looks, how professional. I was watching it being like, ooh, what would I vote that fashion? Oh, if we got <laughs> Barnes coming up, this is great. I was like, oh, I need to get like prepped that this is actually the show. This was amazing. So good job on that. Everyone's loving it. Um, so, yeah. So I don't know. I kind of, it's a bit so of a ZRL. Hard, we're I, talking ZRL. ZRL. That's what we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, okay. So, yeah, we, I just kind of lost the mojo a little bit with that um, Neo Kyo course, the flats or something. Like, we just got beaten so bad, and I was really feeling, like, quite good for the TTT. And I'm not going to lie. Like, my dad called me yesterday. He's like, hey, how you feeling? Because he watches you guys and watches the uh, He Loves You and Dave uh, doing the commentary of it. So he was watching. I was like, like it still hurts. I was like, am I taking Ooh. this too seriously? Like, I just, <laughs> oh. it didn't, it was really sad. It didn't hurt in a way that was like, we'll get you next time. It kind of just hurt in a way of, we were five seconds. Like, it was so close. And it was just, it was so close. And you guys were ahead at one point. Mm. And I, oh. so if you guys didn't watch the broadcast back, it was a tight race. I thought Riot were going to do it at one point when we were calling the commentary. They had brought back five seconds, and it looked like it was gaining. And then, I don't know what if 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 the, if I don't know what happened, but you know, I went because we started covering a lot of different things. Also, with the coverage, there was another event going on. It was TTT day, so we kind of used it for this other event. So we were doing two things at once. But from what I saw, and not you see, also real quick side note. For all you viewers out there wondering why aren't they covering more, if you go back and watch the broadcast and watch how we cover two events at the same simultaneous time, tell me the narrative doesn't disappear when you try and do that. <laughs> it just does. Like, like you, like, and so, anyways, that's a little, but I definitely saw that you guys were like on a freight train, it looked like to me, going really good. And then slowly it just got eaten away at. I thought it was going to come down to less than a second, actually, with how close it was at the halfway point. Yeah, and I think it came down to not so much something we did wrong, but something that 2024 just did right, which they did last time. I think they've got a strategy of potentially saving a rider for the last four kilometers. Um, Because it happened last time too, it kind of blew out. And I think, because I was DSing and I looked at the front, I had like source going so I could see the, the paces on a different screen. I was like, they're going like seven watts a kg. And it just was bananas, right? So I think, like, um, we just couldn't do that. You know, we were still just going with our rhythm. Um, 
we had, did you notice Jackie was on the Tron? No, I didn't notice. No, I didn't. Really? <laughs> so she's racing and she said, we start. I was like, oh shit, ja Jackie. What, what? What? You're on a Tron. <laughs> <laughs> what the? And she'd like got, she works as a doctor and she'd literally come straight from hospital, taken her scrubs off, got on the bike and was like in the pen with like two minutes to go and just started and then was like, oh, I'm not on a TT bike. <laughs> like, I've been there. I've been, that might've been yeah. your sixth. If Jackie Gobby wasn't on a TT bike, I mean, no excuses, but I mean, your strongest rider yeah. was not on a but, TT I mean, she bike. Was, so and I so I think as well I just felt so bad because she she's got USA Nationals this weekend and she's got Worlds the week after and she was kind of like 50-50 about the TTT and I was like look your power is so high like just take a long turn on the front at like a sub threshold and then recover for like a few turns and you'll be sweet but <laughs> when I saw her on the, the tron, tron now she has to do like VO2 on the front oh man yeah so she's on she was 420 on the front and recovering at 350 I was like I am so sorry Like this, <laughs> this was not a recovery ride. And so, I don't know, I kind of left it, long story short, but I just kind of had a funny thing where I was like, I just feel a bit flat. You know, I was like, the team were turning themselves inside out and it's just kind of heartbreaking. I think when you're a DS, it's even more heartbreaking because you're like, I, I know how hard you were working and I couldn't, you know, we couldn't do anything. So, I, I don't know, it's, it's good. We're all pumped for next week. We're gonna be rocking the tartan, I think. Heck yeah, there we go. Well, so in the, uh, when they swapped the TT bikes, when, when, so for, and we actually had this question come up in broadcast. And for those that don't know, the, it might be new to some of you that are new to the podcast, TT bikes can draft in T, uh, team time trial mode only, right? And so when that happened though, when they made that swap and they went to that new pens and everything, uh, I went to swap my bikes and there was like some sort of a bug and I was doing it at the last second because I had a similar situation where it was really, really busy or whatever. And bam, same exact situation. I just ended up sitting in. Like I just ended up being useless because I was like, there's just nothing for me to do uh, because yeah. the TT is just so much faster on the front. I, I saw the records got absolutely smashed this morning by your, uh, by SAR Snowpins actually in the team time trial. They demolished it this morning too as well, which was uh, pretty interesting. Anyways, with Team Time Trials being the topic, let's go ahead right into this one. Chat, let us know what you think. I've seen a lot of chatter in the community saying two is too many. Now, you know, yeah. you're going to get a lot of different opinions around this from different um, talent types. If your talent type is going to be more of a freight train, I'm just a good steady power, I like threshold, I like the teamwork side of things and you tend to be better at something well you're gonna think the two time trials is really great you got other arguments for it too where it like i said it you know during the commentary a little bit is like this is taking a team putting them by themselves and seeing how cohesive they are what kind of a team they really are all by themselves with no other factors impacting them right and that's a really great way to discover that as well but at the same time i do understand maybe not wanting um the race of truth more than once during the season, especially with only six races. But again, I understand it also why one other point that's a positive. So there's two points and then one more being that this is what WTRL was born out of, but that doesn't make it that why it should be ZRL that way. Yeah, I'm seeing a bit of chat coming in that they do like two TTTs, but they don't want any more. I'm, um, uh, I was okay with two TTTs when it was an eight race round because it was, but I think when it went to six, I think it needed to drop to one team time trial. I think just two in a six race round is a little, um, one, I find the TTT is not like the most exciting thing to watch sometimes because it's, I don't know, like it's good to watch teams who are really good at it and it's nice, but I don't know. It's a, uh, I kind of sit on the fence on this one. I'm not, hugely against it. I'm not hugely for it. I do feel sorry for the team, say such as Optimum in our group, who you, they struggle in the TTT because they're new to the game, whereas they're great in the scratch races because they can just race hard and put out good watts. So, I mean, maybe replace the TTT with a, a different team format for that. Like maybe throw in something from Grand Prix. So you've got like a, a TTT and then you have a 
I don't know, a short hill climb challenge or a sprint challenge or something like that, you know, maybe throw in a different race format. So it's not a scratch race, but it's something just a little bit different. I don't know if they can do that. I really like that idea actually is, okay, have some different modes. And I do see a great point coming through and I can see why you might want to change up to a team time trial because look, it's it, it, with five races, they're all the same. So that kind of gets old hat a little bit. So let's have something different, but that doesn't mean throw a team. I mean, all we have, I guess, is team time trial and the points racing right now, you know, me, but uh, you could throw in some other kind of mode perhaps. So I, I think that's a really great way to start to experiment. Uh, sp uh, battle points, if they ever show up, obviously will be an option. Hopefully we'll see yeah. how that goes. So, well, let's move on next up. Anna, you picked up on this. You put it on the uh, script here right before we went live. And I had a little um, interaction with Lama before he made his, mo his um, video about this and didn't really understand what was going on. I didn't get a chance to watch the video yet, so maybe you could give us a lowdown. Wahoo V6 Race Mode has been launched. And your explanation before... Now, he did some minor tests, it sounded like, as well. So I want to give some caveat to this, like... He did some tests. It seemed to show something very clearly. I'm wondering, whoa, is that for real? Does it really do what he showed in the test? But go ahead and give us an explain. Wahoo V6 race mode. Yeah, and I'm interested to see what chat lights up with here because I've been talking it a lot with my husband about what it was and is it fair and all of that kind of stuff. And it's been like quite exciting. I watched it really late last night. So it's and I don't want to get into too much of the tech because I'll probably get it wrong. But basically, if you have a Wahoo V6 with a direct connect or a Wi-Fi connection, then you can implement a race mode now if you do the latest update. Now, what the race mode does is basically at the moment when you see instant power on Zwift, so that power number in the top left of your screen, even though it's instant, it's only every second ish. So if you put a really hard pedal stroke down, there'll be a slight lag less than a second probably, but it's still a little bit of a lag. So they've got this race mode where it's sending, say, the signal 10 times a second. And he showed Llama with two screens side by side. I'd say go watch his video. And you could see it was like, duh, 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 like the power just constantly changing. And then what he did is he got two avatars next to each other on the same power source and tested one race mode, one not. And that rider on race mode, boom, like five meter gap straight away because that power read instantly. And so my husband was like, well, it's only a second. Like, how much does that count? I mean, how much are you sprinting in Zwift? I was like, all the time. <laughs> and I just wonder. Does your husband even ride Zwift is what I'm I know. wondering. No. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you're doing, like, a hill climb, I, who cares, really? But this, I don't know, like, it looked like a huge advantage. And then I go, if this is as much of an advantage as it looked like on Llama's testing, and he showed all the power files and everything. So if you're getting a split second, I mean, you're going to be winning races. You're going to be winning sprints against someone who doesn't have race mode. Now, the question is, and Barnes said he can help me with the text. So maybe when he comes on, he can help. Is this the same with a power meter? Is it the same with a stages smart bike? Like, is this only for the Wahoo V6 and the V2 smart bike of theirs because if it is then is this creating an uneven playing field but then if you look at the real world see there we go he's got it up so you can see the right hand side that's the, the not instant power the orange is not race mode and the blue is race mode and he's putting down a whoa, whoa 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 that yes. was huh yeah Interesting. Go so, back here. Look, see that again. Look at how quickly. Right there, right there. Yep. Interesting. For those that are listening on the podcast, head on over to the GP Llama's um, channel and check this out. Uh, I went over to about 1210 on the video. Watch the whole video through, actually. Check out Llama. He's, he's amazing, awesome. But um, yeah, like that was pretty instantaneous versus not so instantaneous, for sure. Yeah. Like, very obviously. And one over Wi-Fi, one over Bluetooth, too, which is interesting. Um, well, the Wi-Fi, you can only do race mode on the Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. So the Wi-Fi has the more instantaneous plus pushing 10, oh. 10 hertz. Okay, so gotcha. Okay, so there's or maybe those are the same thing. I don't know. But 
interesting. That does seem like a little bit of a... Here's the thing. Okay, I want to say I'm going to give a little bit of a... I agree. There's, it seems to be a little bit of an advantage to me. I'm also going to say this already exists from trainer to trainer and from power source to power source in a lot of different ways. So people already kind of put up with this. You know what I mean? Like I put up with it a little bit. Other people, and you have to be a little bit aware. But I'm noticing like the amount of awareness you have to be to like jump on something. I mean, you you're just gonna lose a couple of meters. Oh, no matter what, at this point with this, it looks like to me. Like that's yeah. just the reality, and and not being able to go with jumps, and you have to be you have to lead, never follow. Now at this point, if you're on if you're not on direct connect. <laughs> exactly, and I think I mean for one, there's a the fact that they've called it race mode. So it's a race advantage. But then the question I came around to was like, is this just okay? Because in the real world, you can buy speed, right? You can go get yourself some better wheels. You can go get DI2 on your bike. You can do things like this in the real world to make yourself faster. So is this just fair game? Like, okay, well, I've got the money. I'm going to go buy myself that V6 trainer now, direct connect, and there we go. I've got myself an extra, you know, three meters in a sprint, and I'm prepared to do that. Is that similar? Like, are we, should we to, be too outraged? In gaming, by this that's a this? reality. In gaming, like, yeah. I would like to move to Seattle if I was going to be a top end esports rider because I need to be as close to Amazon servers as I possibly can be. Like, in gaming, yeah. like, I have a razor mouse here specifically for that reason i have razor keyboard here specifically for the reason that i want the quick mechanical pop 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 i want i have a 240 hertz monitor in front of me right now that's the exact size i want for the best fps shooting i built the setup specifically for that my gaming pc so there is a certain reality that you know if i want to compete then i need competitive equipment like that's yeah. that's just re and like what what are we, so now, is there better ways to do readings? I have given some feedback about, like, is there a better way to do readings with a race mode in Zwift in some sort of way? And I thought that they could fix that with the, drop, with the, with the dropout situation because I thought it had something. And I must be wrong because I'm, well, the way I'm reading this here, this is from the power source towards Zwift and it can have a quicker response i always for some reason in the back of my head thought that that three second leg you can get with power meters and get the sticky watts thing that's there so that users don't always just have dropouts because of how bad their power sources might be and it just kind of consistently keeps power for someone who's just kind of training or doesn't want to drop out so it's like every three seconds you could kind of have this little bit of a drop out and then no it doesn't just lose zero power for it. but if you have a major dropout you get zero power i thought this was related no it doesn't seem like it at all this is actually how quickly this uh push from the power source is coming at zwift is actually and, and how much it can update how quickly i had no idea that that actually existed yeah, neither did I. And I think like Barnsley, who was our guest today, he said, I got you, Anna. So he might talk a little bit more on the tech side of that. <laughs> so oh, um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that until we talk to Barnes, because I'm interested in his perspective being a racer and uh, he's about to do worlds on that trainer. So I'm interested to know if they've come out and said anything like, make sure you've got race mode on or something like that. So it's an interesting time to come out with that update, you know, a week away from a world champs where everyone is on that trainer. So yeah. Let's see what Barnes has to say. All right, let's go to something a little fun here. This, uh, I, Simbala Philippe, is kind of an interesting. <laughs> you put this in, not me. Anna did this. I didn't do this. We, we shared this on Instagram. If you haven't checked this out, this is a great little thing. I mean, pretty funny here. Meet the Zwift Pace Partners, as you can see here. Seems that uh, Bahama Longbottom over here, Ashton Lamy seemed to like this. He says this is art. But uh, this is pretty great. Taylor, am I a man or am I a woman? I am Taylor, my first name, my last name, both. I am Taylor. Taylor, who am I? Where do I come from? I mean, these are absolutely great. Go and check these out. Uh, really enjoyed this. And the funny thing is, is I've, I've, I, so I'm going to go straight to Coco, Genie, but I'm going to go straight on over to Constance because this is how I feel <laughs> about Constance as well. <laughs> like, no. But I, I feel like it should say F U I am Constance instead of like, because yeah. I like, I, because that's like, she's like 4.2. I said it, keep up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. let's go. Like, that's how she, and, and uh, in some of the partner spaces or whatever, I've been like 
chatting sometimes about feedback about patient bots or whatever and i'm like we just need to rename her the wicked witch of the west like she yeah. like that's like she and she needs to be riding a broomstick she should be on a broomstick <laughs> with a with a witch, witch hat is what she should be doing that's because she just demolishes you if especially if it's on a climbing course yeah i'd go check those out i it's you know when a post has gone zwift viral when i was on a like to a Zwift ride and someone is, because they've got those pacer bots on the Zwift ride, and then someone's bringing up that post about the pace bot we're with. I was like, this is so gold. And then we're going through like each of the personalities. I loved it. And my fave was the conjoined twins. Oh my God. <laughs> what is the conjoined? Oh my God. Okay, wait. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Maria. Twins. Yeah, yeah, Maria. We're Maria. Well, you know what's funny is I think, I wonder with the with the creative mind that did this is like, the way that the bots talk to you that he's if they actually pulled out the personality and then wrote about it because of the way that those um scripted lines come across you know what i mean i think yeah. that's really where this was coming from but one little thing since we are in pacer bots a little bit here um the other day i went to log in and i went to go do my what i'm calling aim labs where i'm like hanging out and i'm trying to work on my pay, my my um drafting and there were two, the Constance and what's the other one? The other red. I can't remember the other red. I, why isn't that? I, that's not on the top of my head. I don't ride with the reds. Jeez. Well, anyways, there's two, there's, two, there's two different uh, 4.0 plus. And they were both on climbing courses. And I immediately gave some feedback. I was like, I immediately went and gave feedback because I was like, dude, like, why are both of them on? Like, I need a... a in my opinion, there should be a red that's on a flat course so you can like work on that kind of speed and power on a flatter course. And if you want to go do some climbing, 4.2 climbing, let's go. You know, I think that those yeah. that that's kind of makes more sense than just throwing them both out. You don't get any variety then at that. And I feel like every pacer bot should maybe be like that where you got a flatter mm -hmm. course and you got a climbing course and then you can get whatever you're looking for on the day. Um, sorry, this is going to go on a little tangent, but I loved the pacer bots in the Tour de Zwift, and I'll tell you why. is because I crash coursed and crammed and did four stages in one ride um, to catch them all up, and I was like, oh, man, like, I wonder if anyone else is doing this. So many people. It's a thing. <laughs> we're cramming? Like, they were all cramming? Llama was there. Llama crammed six. I crammed four and we're all in the same one. So obviously I wasn't the only one who timed it. And so it was like, okay, I'll do this one. And then in half an hour, I've got that one. And then in a, that'll take me about an hour. So I'll do another one. And then every ride I had like probably a crew of about 10 who were all cramming and doing the same thing. And it was awesome. Like it was so much fun, except when I got to Harrogate and I did a one lapper and I was like, this will take 30 minutes, I hope. And then it was that real rolling one. I was like, oh, this is actually this is actually a little bit tough here. I don't think I can stay with the C pace partner. I'm gonna have to like go off the front. And then the next one I'm like just dying. And Llama was having doing lead out sprints for everyone for all the banners. And I was like, this was actually quite fun. I might actually plan a long ride around the next tour when they do the cram week and just do all the rides in one ride. Huh, that sounds pretty cool actually, to, as far as a um single day stage like stages all the stages in one go uh for a good base workout to get because you can do it with a bunch of people like all the time they're always there yeah. and you're just kind of kind of solo doing your own thing the whole time huh well yeah, okay it's fun one another topic here i wanted to bring up about things in game how does the weather work in swift do you know anna how it works well, I know because you sent me this message. Well, and okay, I wait, it really okay, cool. How did, okay, so how, how, okay, but first of all, on night and day though, so do you know how the night and day changes? I, like, I'll just make an assumption. I assume it's just on a set time. So it's day for 45 minutes and it's night for 45 minutes or whatever the time is. Um, London seems to rain all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Watopia rains not so much. I know it doesn't rain in races, like in proper like broadcast races, like Grand Prix and things. Uh, and I know that there is nighttime always in Neokio. It doesn't go to daytime. That's all I know about the weather. 
So it's one hour cycle. So one hour in Zwift equals 24 hours, basically. At least that's what Ooh. Eric Schlange says over at Zwift Insider. So if you're wondering why it's dark out, it's on a one hour cycle. So one hour equals 24 hours. I do remember us talking about that on the Zwiftcast in the past, I believe. And we were chatting with Eric about it in the past. But then there's the weather. Anna, do you want to take this one? Because this is really interesting. Now, you're saying it rains more in the London. So I wonder if it's a little bit different formula. But, but this is interesting. Yeah, I, you, you read this through because I love this. Right, and I think right. you on the gaming side. Yeah, all you right, do right. it. You do it. So the rain is – so this is directly from John Mayfield, actually. The rain specifically is based on a stack of sin cost waves that take the clock input from the server. Can anybody who's a dev out there help me understand that? <laughs> and then when the wave formula ends up over, say, 0.98, it rains. Simple, no packet way to synchronize weather across all clients. What? What? Like, did I help anybody understand how the weather works? <laughs> Maybe Barney can help us out on that it. one. Yeah, well, okay, but. So it sounds like there's some sort of, and maybe he's just, I don't know, like I, I read that and I'm like, is he just messing with me so that I would read this out on the rap? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And not under, <laughs> like, like, is this like what? So anyways, and then I, I Can was I like. Can I read this bit? I like. Okay, this fine. I'll let, okay. So who, do you remember uh, the Game Master? Do you remember Game Master? So my husband was on it, so I remembered all of the blue AI people, but who's the Game Master? So the Game Master was an avatar that sat on the right-hand side of the road in, originally in, um, uh, come on, come on, Jarvis, originally in Jarvis, okay? And it, then he moved on over to Watopia, when Watopia launched, and he was just always there. And you'd always just be like, hey, there's Game Master, and we would talk about what Game Master's doing, and Game Master this, and we had theories about what Game Master does, and I thought maybe he was just a viewer that, like, because they had a Twitch channel that always ran Zwift, and it was just always up for a while, or they were always kind of viewing Zwift in some sort of way, so I, I had assumed that up at the offices, they always had Zwift up on the on a screen, but we had, he had, I ended up finding out that Game Master had a totally different function. Go ahead and take it away, Anna. Okay, so Game Master, this is direct. Game Master was a Zwift account that ran on a machine under my desk, that being John, and was responsible for driving all the blue AI guys back when there were no users. And so no Game Master, no AIs. But this is the part I like. As a side effect, he was also represented as a normal avatar just chilling on the side of the road. So they sometimes put him like near a construction site and put a hard hat on him. <laughs> I would love that. Just, I mean, I love myself some fashion. But I, the first thing you can tell that I saw when I saw that was like, bring the hard hat back. Oh my gosh, can you bring the hard hat back as a like a garage unlock? It should be like a garage unlock. Construction worker outfit. Like we're we're like working on a world. Go test it and wear it like a road worker's uniform. Oh That's my gosh, that's a cool idea. So. That's a cool now. What uh, the Game Master, I wonder if anybody picked up on this, that when the Game Master was gone, the AIs were gone. That like, like if there was moments when he wasn't hanging out on course, I don't remember many times that he wasn't on course. But uh, anyways, if you remember Game Master, he, I thought he might have something to do with the weather. I don't know. I was kind of relating the fact that this, guy, this thing was sitting around. What does he control? Was he in charge of things? Is he kind of like got God mode? Sounds like he kind of had some God mode because he made the AIs happen. All right, we're going to move on. Last thing. Can Zwift hit 10 million subscribers? That was a goal, it sounded like, of Eric Min when he had an interview recently on Forbes. If you want to go check that out, I think it's linked uh, probably over on Zwift Insider. You can pretty, find it pretty easily. But, um, you know, the, the, claim, the claim in the interview was around 1 million right now. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff talked about, about the future of Zwift, how it works. They did a really cool interview. It's actually in the DC Rainmaker uh, upcoming increased subscriber price that uh, may be coming that was hinted at in the Forbes interview. But the real pickup here that you saw, and I was like, whoa, wow, that's a big claim. And Eric's always, you know, got big goals. He's always really, really got like seeing this. Whew, and, and I love it that he sets the marker so high. Is this marker like really high though, Anna? What do you think? I mean, I think it was quite interesting. I like big goals as well. Like, otherwise, what's the point? You want that visionary leader. But 
I think if it's 10 million subscribers, the first thing I thought is it's, gonna, it's got to be quite a different offering. Like if you're wanting 10 million, in my opinion, you're moving into the, the fitness realm rather than the sort of gamey cyclist realm. So at the moment, uh, you know, you look at dedicated Zwifters. I don't know how many of those are sort of people who just jump on to like get fit. Like you look at a Peloton um, and you know at Christmas time I anecdotally was chatting with an old school friend who was like oh I got myself a Peloton because I just want to get a bit fitter this year and I talked about Zwift and she's like oh that sounds epic but I think they would have to shift their whole offering to targeting people who don't have a bike because you just have to get them on a exercycle and on this, and I think that would get you to 10 million. Um, I don't know about this current offering, like they've, they've done well with the Zwift Hub, but you still need a bike to do that, right? Did you say and I exercise think. Cycle? Did you say exercise? Yeah, an exercise cycle. An exercise cycle. <laughs> that's a that's kilt, it, right? That, that's kilt level. That's kilt level. <laughs> oh, God, don't even start <laughs> me on the kilt. Um, <laughs> So, so I, you know, I have to, I, I have to agree. And this, what came to the top of my head then was if that's the goal and it is, it needs to be a big change up there. Does the new co-CEO have something to do with this? He worked with Amazon. Okay. The new co-CEO uh, that just came on alongside of Eric. Eric, a lot of times is a, a amazing visionary. You know, he's got the vision, goes out and gets, uh, you know, in, in, in the financial sector. They've raised a ton of cash. I think Kurt's coming in, and I wonder if he's going to be the one that helps go the direction that you just talked about because of what he did at Amazon. That's interesting to mm. me because he worked on a lot of, like, massive scale, general public, kids apps. You know what I mean? Amazon Kids was his yeah. main area for a while. So... That, I wonder, could maybe, if, but the direction of the platform would have to be very, very different than maybe what you and I are interested in. And I think this is, it, it did concern me a little bit because I'm like, well, you need to stop doing some of the stuff you're doing if you want to get 10 million subscribers. Like, if 10 million subscribers is your key company strategy and goal, then why are you putting money into a, a UCI world champs? Why are you putting all your advertising into things like GCN or the Tour de France, you know, like, because Tour that's de targeting even? cyclists. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tour de France, Fam Vix. I mean, I love that, so I'm saying don't pull that away, but I think that needs to be clear. Like, the statement I would imagine that aligns with them currently is we want Zwift to be the cycling platform of choice for cyclists because that's where all their advertising is going. Like, you watch the Tour de France, Fam Vix Zwift, you've probably got a bike already. Cool, go on Zwift. So, but I yeah, don't know I, if that's ever changing now, Anna. That's the only thing is I would I would say I don't know yeah. if being the whale right now that it is in the room like this is the elephant in the room. There, there's no budget. It seems like to me, unless some sort of major game company comes around and spends two years yep. with some big devs and then does Gran Turismo, and everything changes. You know what I mean? Because the reality yeah. is if, they ca if a big game company came in, literally just the way you log in and get a front screen would make you go, ah, I'm playing this. <laughs> like it would be like, you know what I yeah. mean? But yeah, right yeah. now where it stands within cycling, I don't, I mean, I, like you just saw with the, with the Instagram thing, that was Zwift viral. Just the fact that Zwift viral can happen within the cycling community says, this is our space. And I think they can, yeah. I think they can, that flag is stuck there. And I don't think they got to mess with that flag much right now. I think they can yeah, leave it yeah, there exactly. and they might be able to go do this other thing to build up while they still maintain what's happening here. As far as the resources point of view go, I don't know, maybe I'm just trying to give the benefit of the doubt in that area. Yeah, and no, I think, I mean, and from other gaming companies, I mean, do other gaming companies go, we want to have 10 million or probably for them as a hundred million subscribers. Like, are they going about, because Zwift has got the great thing that it's a, a health and fitness platform. Um, so gaming, do they go out and, I mean, I don't see gaming adverts because I'm probably not a gamer, right? So I would anticipate if that's where Zwift is heading, you'd start to see advertising on a variety of places other than cycling orientated. 
you know, that gets that person. Like my friend who goes, I want to get a bit fit. Oh, I just add for Zwift, come up on, you know, some more general fitness kind of a thing, right? Or like, you know, you see Peloton advertising on Sex in the City, right? Well, (laughs) you see like Zwift, I'm Zwifting. You know, it's more general advertising. So I don't know. It's, I love a big goal like that because it seems like- I think you would have to go there. You have to get certain things in place though, right, Anna? Like you have mm. to get certain things in place first. Like you said, with Peloton, you're not going to advertise Peloton unless a Peloton is available <laughs> like yeah. in those spaces, right? And if yeah. there's a lot of friction still, so I wonder if one of the things Eric talked about is like kind of almost, he, and he didn't use this language, but it sounded like this tipping point that like going forward of like, he was talking metaverse kind of alongside of this tipping point of like a lot more people. And I wonder if, in the back of his head, some of that is that setup of like, we need all these things in place. We now have the Zwift hub heading towards some other kind of hardware things in two to three years, maybe be in a place where that, that, that can be there as well. The other thing I think, I know we weren't going to go too deep in this, but the idea of going public has been for a long time. For the last two or three years on Zwiftcast, we've talked a lot about the, the company going public and being offered on the, on the market. Um, and I think they have to get toward that if it's going to happen though too so with all those things being talked about going public it, you know this idea of, of 10 million subscribers I, I think that maybe there will be a shift the new co-ceo just me trying to put together i've got no other information other than i'm trying to read, read the writing on the wall here but anyways all right we're gonna keep moving now we've got our guest james barnes is jumping in uh you know you saw in this social post i'm just gonna throw this up here really quick because uh, if you haven't checked out over on our social medias, over at Zwift Community Live, Z Community Live, over on Instagram there, this win by him on the first ever Glasgow Crit Course was absolutely amazing. Great job by Barnes. He obviously super fit right now. World's contender. Riding for next. Presented by In Short. And I'm really glad to have James Barnes back on the program here. Barnsey, how you doing, man? Have you been training like crazy? When you first jumped on with us here, I was like, has he had a, a, a good go at some training? Is he still recovering from the, from the Glasgow crib? Because that was quite an effort the other day. Yeah, no, that was, yeah, Alex has got me going. And we're, we're basically the Zada test today after this, and then we're done. Um, I unfortunately had to get a replacement trainer, hence why my Zada test is later than everybody else's and you know this is the final sharpening of the axe and i think also the crit course was a great you know great mental thing for me as well to see how the course raced and i think for everybody else who was there just to get an idea of how the course races and and how it goes and i I, that uh, that course is that course is unbelievable that course is going to be such a great finale it's it's going to be interesting to see how it races as an elimination though versus just a pure out scratch race so because of obviously the elimination at the KOM and then the elimination at the sprint at the lap banner as well. Before we dive into that, just real quickly, I want to just set the what's going on with life. How are you doing, Barnes? Before we jump right into everything, like I know we're like like me and Barnesy were chatting for like an hour and a half about worlds last night on Discord. Like, who's your pick? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna win? Are you this da 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 da? Like we were going off for a little while. So, anyways, I, so we're already like you guys are just jumping into like those who are listening are jumping into an ongoing conversation essentially. But uh, how are you doing? Like, what's going on in life? Is this your whole focus? And what you know before we jump into all the nitty gritty uh so no this is not my whole focus i'm getting married in just over a month as well and so that's also kind of good focus as well Woo! thank you awesome. um so it's all the final preps basically done i just need to find a shirt and a tie and then the family to arrive <laughs> um otherwise work is work and it work is going well work keeps me busy and out of trouble um lets me do what i can do you know obviously outside of it which is great and then, but basically, yeah, at the moment, Worlds is, is most of the focus because that's what, eight days from now, which is scary, as always. And I try not to think about it too much, but I think our chat last night while I was doing a recovery ride, Nathan, was great. Is, is, it's always interesting to see people's perspectives of it and, and throwing the names out there. And then when I woke up this morning to see how your top 10 had ch- completely changed from when you first sent it to me, <laughs> it which was amazing. Like, changed. It did it completely was, change. Come on. 
Did you did you end up doing your underdog top we're ten just, that, that no, we we're spoke not talking about? about it. We're not talking about it. I'm not talking about it. <laughs> let's, let's hear it. I want to hear. I at least want to hear an underdog top ten because I was a mate. You know, like to hear. You know, we were talking about it, and they were saying, "Yeah, but you know, what about this person, and what about that person, and a certain person sitting in chat at the moment?" And we're like, "Yeah, like sure," but then we also again agree, and then we always kept coming. The thing that again we always kept coming back to is the quality of this field of this 86, 84 rider field is unbelievable i i it's going to be insane that first race is going to be who who gets in the top 30 i think is going to be then from then it will be easier to see who gets who who will win it because it's just it's so tight yeah i think um i'm uh, i mean i've been talking world i had a call with someone um talking about zwift yesterday and literally we weren't supposed to be talking about, we we're talking about something else and world chat just came in for like 45 minutes. I was like, this is like so exciting, especially because I've ridden some of the course now and Barnes, you actually came onto my stream while I was riding around the crit course, checking it out because I was riding it the wrong way around first. And you're like, turn around, turn around, go right up the <laughs> right way. But of the, I mean, obviously you will have been reconning the hell out of Scotland. Um, and I know from a, a rider point of view, the feedback's been awesome. People are like loving it. From a racer point of view and looking ahead to Worlds next week, I mean, what do you think of the course? What do you think of each one? Like which one are you really pumped about? Assuming say you make each one. And what kind of a rider are you looking at to be making it into that third round? Yeah, it's it's tough, but I think this World Champs is 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 definitely more of a Zwifter's um, forte. It's hundred percent more of a puncher style racer. If that puncher can get through that second race, the bigger rider is definitely going to pay off. The bigger rider, I'm hoping in my mind, in my in my heart, I want I want somebody from the community. I want somebody who's going to represent the the bands for us in the community we're going to see it and we're going to see it in that third race but the first race is just i think is going to just be a flat out full gas full gas race there's going to be very little uh, hopefully going to see very little in terms of movement within the bunches because it's just the, the course itself just is just so quick the second race that kom backwards and forwards with the 14 percent ramp that's brutal so it's a case of literally having to using that climb and climbing that climb to your advantage and using the climb to get you the most out of that climb for you as a rider trying to make sure that you save as much energy as possible and apply that energy in the correct place so that you're riding and climbing it as fast as possible there's definitely some serious caveats in that climb after going up and down it i think about three or four times yesterday and you if you can use the same thing with the crit if you can use that course and you're smart with that course you can save a lot of power but get a lot of speed out of it for free. And I think that, and that's definitely what we're going to see is there's a lot of, it's going to reward the guy, the rider, the he or her, or the, the, guy, the woman or the man who, who has really good Zwift craft and then make sure that they apply the power when they need it, but then also not overextending themselves. So it's, it's a, um, it's going to be great. You know, I, I, there's some definitely big dark horses in there and some people that we don't see in the Zwift that are definitely have a really strong shout in these events. And, you know, we've seen them all over socials being posted and you can see their preparations as well. And you can see that, crikey, you, you, you can't discount a non-Zwifter. You, you, you know, we've learned that the last two times in the world, you cannot discount them because they just, they have some power that a lot of us don't have. So speaking of these courses, then, I mean, can we dive just a little bit for a second? I mean, for those that don't know, you've been, you've seen these uh, in, have you gotten a, race, gotten a race book, Barnes, I'm assuming? You've, got, you've taken a look at what, something along those lines, or at least uh, been shown? Uh, yeah, I've, I've, been able, so I've been able to, I've been able to ride all three. I've only raced the crit course. So I did, um, I've done, you know, the rolling hills, just rolling around, it, literally rolling the hills and just you know bumping around it and seeing it and and you know there's one or two little pinch points but it's nothing to race to race it by because it literally is as the name states it's rolling hills so it's just very gradual gradients 
few points where it drags a bit, which is great because you'll see the bunch. Ho- you know, you'll see. But you the have bunch total distance, out. right? Like, and how many laps, and like you have all that information. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah we've yeah, got yeah. all that in the race book. Yeah, we've got sent yeah, the race yes. book. I, I've lost it now, so I don't have that now. Oh, no, and, no, and no, not I promise you, I have it now at all. But I saw the gradients and the root, root profile. <laughs> He's lost the race book. First. It's all in the back oh of your God. head, right? It's completely like. Yeah. Buried, like <laughs> you don't have to worry about it's that. I try the, it's one of those things I try not to think about too much because you know I'm the type of person as well. I'll I'll think about it to the nth degree and just and over and over analyze it and then dig myself into a hole. And I'm trying so to. So you got the okay. So you got the punch. A go hundred riders max, right? 80, 80 some riders yeah. or so. One lap, fourteen point two kilometers. One I mean, lap. that's so short. really short for the it's first so one short. with that many riders, like. I was kind of like, whoa, this is going to – so how do you – I mean, with so much on the line, I'm like – I'm wondering in the back of my head, is this going to be like sit up and wait for like 500 – a K to go, 2K to go? Or do you think it's going to be like bam, bam, or, or you, our team's going to – because there's a lot of country representation. Like some of these teams got a lot of depth. And 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 and, and yep. they've got matches to burn in those riders where they like I might not make this I'm just gonna make this fast and go and make other countries chase. Do you think that's gonna happen? And with only 14k, you got no time to play games. Like you might have a few of those just going boom right from the get go. Yeah, and it and that's the problem is that it's it's gonna be and 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 that's the one that's the one thing when I saw them release the you know the the distances I was really worried that they that they. That, that it is so short that it's now basically it's turning into a lucky part of who gets to the top 30 because it's just so fast and now it's a you've got 80 guys sprinting and it's going to be and i'll put them up I'll, I'll put it on it if it becomes down to a bunch sprint those 30 people are going to be within a quarter of a second of each other it's going to be so and this they've got and uh and they've so, got race mode right but, they still got race mode <laughs> yeah, see so that's where see so that's where the extra five meters that you get from race where it will make will make a difference and it's and coming that's back good, to that's it, good it to is, bring that in now. Bring that in now. Actually, that's really yes, good point. So, but the, everyone's on the V6, and everyone has Wi-Fi in the house, though. So well, we hope everybody has Wi-Fi in the house. Um, so you can either have the choice, obviously, of racing it over Wi-Fi. Uh, you, there is no state that you have to in the book. You have to race it over Wi-Fi or anything. It's just suggest. I'm guessing it's suggested. So you could race it over Ant or Bluetooth if you want to. So then coming back to race mode. Every I'll put it at that every trainer and basically device has the ability to send out data at a higher rate of hertz. There was testing done um, by people that <laughs> this was done not over Wi-Fi so that it is available over, I think, Bluetooth and Ants. So it should come to other trainers. Hmm. So it is basically the fact that the, the manufacturer needs to release a mode for that device to send the information out at a faster rate. But always remember that Zwift will still record your information at one hertz. So your files will be recorded at one hertz. So you'll never see the ten hertz and the and the and the crispness of in that the file. Graph you won't see it at, in the file, in the but file. you will yeah. but you but you are getting your avatar you'll responding see, at that yes, at that yes. rate. Interesting. Yes. So that ten hertz, that ten hertz is amazing. You, I, I get dizzy watching it when I was racing. It was, it was starting to freak me out because the numbers literally just ping start. If you're not trying to pedal smoothly, they just ping pong everywhere, and it's quite, it's quite something to watch. And and I think for somebody who doesn't understand Zwift and doesn't realize that's what that is, will say, well, something's going wrong there because these numbers are updating so frequently and so quickly. You know, I so, really, wait, wait, so. Go ahead, Anna. Go ahead, Anna. Go for it. So, so I've just got a question is, okay, you're sitting there. There's a, a world rider who's on the V6, but they're not really up to play with Llama's videos or all of this. Do they have the ability, has Wahoo sent anything to say, hey, there's a game mode, uh, like a race mode? Or is this just? No, this is just Llama. This is just somebody picked up a Llama video. So... And it's an advantage, right? Like, I mean, you'll have race mode on, right? You see this as an advantage. I turned this on first thing, and then I raced the, ZR, the ZRL TTT, and then did the crit course with it. And I, it's a, it's a game changer. <laughs> I don't know it's, if you know this, but he won it, on the crit course but, <laughs> and the breakaway. But I'll say, but but I'll say, Anna. I'll, but I'll say this as well, Anna. Is even even when I moved on my V5 from 
Ant connection to direct connect, the hertz rate to Zwift was definitely more than one hertz. Okay. So it was definitely updating at more than one. So, so do you know what I did last night? I watched the video at like 10 o'clock at night and then I found this in my, <laughs> my cupboard. What is that, and Anna? I, what, what are you holding in your that hand, is, Anna? That is my direct connect, which I had never connected because oh, I was like, oh, what's that little, that little piece? And that then I was makes like, such a difference. <laughs> yeah, and it right. makes it, it you 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 as soon as you plug it in it is something when i plugged it with my v5 it changed it changed the way i rode zwift okay the way I've in my say, I'm, I'm, you to, know i'm not to, trying to, to like beat my own drum here too much but since like five years like when since like one of the first swift casts i've been talking about we like the racer in me and the interactions with zwift I have always said in in direct countering to someone who's like, why are you so punchy and why are you all over the place and be more consistent and, and hearing people comparing power and they're like, my average power over five minutes is da 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 and they're talking about racing. And I'm like, racing has nothing to do with what your average power was over five minutes. Racing has everything to do with a split second decision 50 times during a race like a hundred times yep. during a race. And that split second decision has to correlate with a s less than a split second reaction in your muscles in order to be in the right place at the right time over and over and over and over and over again throughout the duration of the entire race. So you made all the best choices to place yourself first over that finish line. And I am, you know, there are some like challenges here. They're like, oh, advantage and this and that. This, on the other side of it, I'm like, yes, finally, like this is exactly what we've been needing for so long to have instantaneous power from trainers specifically because trainers have driven me absolutely mad and it's the main <laughs> reason why I've been using power meter as my power source because yeah. I want instant reaction from my avatar. Yeah, and, and 100% and, and that's as I was saying with the, I was gonna say to Anna is that when I, as soon as I connected my direct connect, my ability to control my position in a bunch became Inst like instantly better it is even though we're on the other side of the world Anna, and we're miles from the servers that ability for you for, to control your positioning within the bunch is a lot easier so it means that you're not having to ping you're not ping ponging or yo-yoing as hard so you're able to control your position and the way that your avatar reacts a lot better which then obviously counters that that you're able to react faster to the way that your app, you know, when somebody attacks that you're able to jump onto it or react to the terrain or use the terrain or, you know, the way the gradient changes so that you can get it and time it correctly. Because as we all know, using stuff like that is, and this is something that, you know, Nathan, that you said is it's game craft. If you have, if the difference between this and if you're able to use this game craft makes, I'm going to say it makes more than a 10% difference overall. It, it's massive. Game craft is everything. Game game craft. If you can, you know, you guys, I'm sure you see it. Is that the guys who, who are aggressive and racing, but yet still their average power is the same as the whole bunch, because they're able to race efficiently, but because they're able to draft efficiently. You know, Anna, your trick that I told you about Libby Hill, it's, it's that understanding of that of it's the it's the fundamental understanding of how the game works and how the game interacts with you as a rider applying your power, and it is so, not just so how you're applying Barney. the power when you're applying the power. Okay. Barney, last night we were chatting a little bit while we were doing the PD4 test. You were in my, you were in my, and I know we're going on another little bit. We'll get back to Scotland in just a second because you're talking about GameCraft. Yep. And one thing that drives me absolutely crazy within a lot of other games that I'm really hoping PD4 does not go towards. I So far in my test with PD4, I really like a lot of things about it. But aim assist. Aim assist. Exactly. God. Exactly. In other games, now for those that don't know what the heck I'm talking about, um, within some other games, when people are using suboptimal <laughs> input devices, which are controllers, when it comes to aim, when it comes to being good at your skill, games, in order to make people participate, because it's about making moolah, like instead of on a like, what's the highest skill level, skill cap you can possibly get, this is very heavily opinionated for all you, but because there's a lot of people that might disagree with me out there, but I am sold on this that just get better equipment and don't create software. So, so they create a software called aim assist so that people can use controllers so that they're cause thumbs can't re interact as quickly with a game 
as a mouse can precisely. with the hand, or, or, or precisely in order to get that aim as good as you can. And when I got into PD4 last night, the way that like it kind of controlled my avatar and slowed me down before I would quickly go past, I liked it a little bit with the auto braking, kind of, but there were moments where I was like, no, I should have been punished there, and I wasn't. I should have been mm. punished for overshooting that avatar, yeah. and I wasn't punished for it. And that actually is assisting someone in a competitive space where they shouldn't be assisted. They should get punished for not aiming correctly with their avatar. And, and, and that's a big thing is, is that now you're taking the, guy, the, the riders who have spent the time learning that craft and learning that skill and, and getting really good at it, and now you're handing it on a silver platter to a rider who doesn't have that skill. And, and, and again, I completely agree with you, Nathan, and, and, and it's something that should not be taken. Now, this is conjecture, though. We just want to say this is conjecture. Like, we're not positive, but that's what it felt like, yeah. right? That's what it yeah. felt like, right? Especially at the top level, that we, especially at the top level, you know, in the races, it's some, it, 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 it definitely cannot be there because now you're taking away from the actual racing the the essence of racing it's taking away it's mm. just and then it just becomes okay well, i'll just put my head down and pedal as hard as i can this is not what swift is this is not well, maybe what, uh, you know <laughs> maybe it'll help the uh, 10 million subscribers be good at racing james so uh, <laughs> on to the uh the next one is i'll, I'll just let, i'll drop that there um so uh, before we um move on is i do just want to ask and i know that this question is, is um tricky because they're also your competition but you know who are you sort of looking at to be doing well at worlds i won't ask who's going to win because i know you kind of want to probably say yourself there because that's why you're putting in all the work <laughs> right but no, one question i had so the lead in one is can team tactics work at all in this in this event it doesn't seem like round one it can can it can you have a country working for a rider in round two to get to round three and and follow up to that looking at that sort of dynamic who do you see as big competition here yeah of course yeah, teams is team team of course teams can make a difference here yeah, i think team yeah well you can see certain riders we're going to see america throwing we're going to be seeing america throw jammers off the front because we all know that's what jammers does and that was that's what jammers profile power profile does is we're going to be seeing riders who don't necessarily have the punch going for the long shots and then forcing and then forcing other teams to then chase and then you know and then it, it's oh, yeah because the thing is you look at it like this now if you put jammers up the front and then you're taking away a spot from your sprinter now do you want to be doing that as a team because you know do you want to be putting that in the sense of taking it away for like okay this let's use america as the example so we throw jammers off the front with another five riders now that's six riders going through now we're taking away six spots away we've taken away 30 percent not 30 percent but like x percentage from the 30 going through now we're looking at it that it's going to be harder for your star riders say your toms your bruins and your larsons getting through now do you want to be risking that percentage points to that to them not getting through who they have the most likely chance and the best chance of winning the third race so it's that it's it's going to be insane of what they do and what they do with the team team tactics because even a smaller nation you know with like us in south africa we've got four riders that's still a thing where we can do it if you have a teammate in that third race my word that is invaluable that is going to be something that is going to be a game changer in terms of the way that 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 third race rides it's going to be huge that's a really good like on that competition and, and the teams and whether or not they they have the depth in order to burn some matches use those matches in order to create chases in order to burn the legs out of some of the favors that are out there and whether or not teams are organized enough within themselves to not have infighting and allow some sacrifice to happen i think the teams that have the there's a higher percentage for i, I think for them to win in the teams that are willing to sacrifice for themselves at a really high level within this race. I think that that's going to be really, 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 really key. It's going to give a huge advantage to those that can sit in. We're going to see some real life, what we've always seen in cycling in that regards. It's kind of a no brainer in that regards in tours and tours and, and, and some of the other racing, you know, that we've seen in real life, but it's really coming to the forefront here. I think in this world in a way we haven't seen before, maybe Barney. 
Yeah, and I, th- I think that's definitely what we're going to see is is this format is definitely going to shake the tree and, and going to shake shake the way that the result, the end result of who's going to win it is going to be. It's not just what we expect that, you know, like last year with, um, you know, with, with Jay Vine and, and Freddie Overt just literally walking away with it. But with then one another big thing effort that's great and then just bam. With mm-hmm. one big effort. Yeah, exactly. And and I think that it's it's great as well that we've got these V6s with the Rick Krennic because I unfortunately had a situation on the final climb up the steepest ramp where I lost. I was doing 225 watts for six seconds while everybody else, me and I was actually doing 400 watts. And that's a game changer because I went from being comfortably in the bunch to just off the back of the bunch. Now all I'm doing is chasing and I'm already at a disadvantage with that climb because it's just outside of my power profile and the way I like to do it. So I'm already on the back foot, which then, you know, so that's where I love that this direct connect is the option because now it just removes that, that pain point for me, that problem, that potential problem. But again, it's also, again, interesting is that it's not, it is not a requirement to race over Wi-Fi or direct connect. It's just, it's an option f- to the rider. So if you, it is a bit, I think if I read the race, I'll find it for you in the race book and I'll say, or, and, and read it through and see if it is, but I'm put money on that. It is recommended that you race over direct connect yeah. for it. So, well, Absolutely. Barney, uh, we do have to move on over to our fashion show, <laughs> but, uh, on, Barney, sorry, on go fashion, ahead, go ahead. I've got some, I've got some requests that people want to know what cotton, your t-shirt says. Cotton, 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 cotton. <laughs> That that, that mo- was it. That moment when that awkward moment when you get caught reading a stranger's shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that moment when you get caught reading a stranger's we shirt. We all got caught. We all just got caught. <laughs> <laughs> got caught by Barney. So that there okay, just, that was a great gift by my part by Monique. She got um got me a whole bunch of these like caricature because we saw we saw on um, Master Chef one of the guys wearing a shirt a t-shirt with a fox riding a wooden bicycle I'll post a photo on my Instagram later I'll send it to you Anna and we were like well, I have to have that t-shirt so I messaged it to him on on Instagram I said please can you share me where this t-shirt got and he said yeah sure then Monique went and got these for my birthday but then found out that they do a whole bunch of other comedic comical t-shirts as well and then got me a whole bunch of these ones, like, you know, the sushi, the iPods versus the tape cassette, you know, all that kind of, I'll just send, I'll send the, I'll post a photo of it. It's, it's, it's hysterical. So I've got some really good ones. Well, Byron, uh, no, you're good, Barney. It's always so awesome to have you on. And we could go on forever. Chat's absolutely loving it. Uh, everybody who's listens, absolutely love having you on. You want to check out Barney. He's got, give us your Twitch real quick. And what, what are you going to be doing over the next week and a half on your Twitch channel uh, for your training coming up for Worlds? And then we'll, we'll let you go. Uh, you can get me at twitch.tv forward, forward, what's it? forward slash Barney underscore NZ. So I've just typed in chat. Um, but then basically what I'll be doing is for the next week is hopefully a very nice easy group ride on Friday t- or well, Saturday, tomorrow, Friday for the rest of the world. Then Sunday just doing a nice, I think it's a zone two zone three eskish ride and then basically just kind of recovery rides with zrl in it just to kind of keep the legs going it just because this is full taper mode this is the work the work's been done the work was done uh, you know the end of last week you know now it's just a case of making sure the game craft the race craft is there the mental point is there you know making sure that we're you're eating correctly you're making sure your, your levels are always topped off you know you're staying healthy you're staying away from anything that caused problems and you know i'm people. seeing guys and chatter <laughs> around people trying to cut weight and people in general but then you know it's also a case of not trying new things and not trying to go to the extremes because you know then you put yourself in a deficit as well 100 percent. well barney good luck at worlds we'll be keeping up with you over the next week and a half over on your twitch channel as well to see how things are going and thanks for uh hopping on with us go 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 check awesome thanks else. guys time yeah. for me to go do a zada test Woo-hoo. All right, good luck on your side of test. There we go. Nice. All right, cheers, Byron. All right, it's always great to have Barney on with us. Talk about some insight. Uh, he's really done. You can tell his mind has been in the books, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. you get somebody who's really just full at a certain moment. It's ready to take the quiz, ready to take the test at the end of the semester. Yeah. That's what he seems like yeah. right now. 
Yeah, that's why I wanted it on the show. So this week in our world's kind of hype train, we've got uh, Barnes who came on today from a racer's point of view. Then next uh, week, we've got uh, Matt Gardner, who is the DS for the USA men's team. Uh, he'll be on the show. So he'll give a different kind of insight. And I, it was interesting to have there Barnes say that, you know, USA is um, the men's team has got, you know, a lot of uh, tools in their toolkit. So yeah, that'd be good to get Matt's uh, inside kind of info there from a DS perspective. Uh, and there has been some calls, maybe we, uh, I know you're all, you'll be overseas commentating it, but uh, we might do a, uh, a little watch party. So uh, keep an eye on Heck that. Yeah, what, make uh, it happen. That'd uh, be awesome. Uh, do a watch yeah, party. Yeah, a watch party here. Oh, yeah. it'd be so we'll cool. I'll, I'll give a shout out. If that happens, I'm going to try and get a shout out out there to the watch party that I know that there's a watch <laughs> party going on. We'll see what happens with that. All right. Well, fashion in the field this week. The, here's what we got. The big thank you to our in-house creative director oh. who's recently been come on here. Uh, I had to give her a ring to make it happen. But uh, Gabrielle has been doing oh, an amazing, amazing job across the... Yeah, it's been really great. So we've got the Z Racing Scotland jersey tartan. It is not a kilt. <laughs> Just for everybody. Oh, it's not a kilt. Oh, we're not even going into that again. It is not a kilt. It is a tartan. Oh, oh, oh my God. And then, I, uh, go I ahead. Picked, uh, go ahead, Anna. So jersey pick of the week, we've got the Scotland jersey tartan. Now I picked here the picture that wasn't the cycling tartan jersey because I actually got this image of the the spectator on the side because I was riding the Scotland, uh, whatever, you know, part of Tour de Zwift ride. And a few of us were commenting like, wow, the, the fans in Scotland have gone next level. Like they're really energetic and having a great old time. So if you're riding around, check them out because uh, it looks awesome. So this guy's got his little satchel on and he's looking pretty excited. But he's got the tartan and uh, I love it. Now, I'm going to say when I put it out for the votes, this is the first jersey that's been super polarizing. So if really? I average the yeah, if I averaged the scores, it would have about a five, but that doesn't tell the story. It was either nines, tens, people were giving it fifteens, twenties, like this is the best jersey ever. And your uh, your lovely wife gave it a two. So we've got like <laughs> two ends of the spectrum here that um and she wasn't the only one. So there was either ones and twos or 10 pluses. So I gave, I gave it yeah. a kilt out of 10. I just gave it kilt out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not even counting that bloody boy. Um, so, so uh, yeah, Tartan Jersey, I'm giving it a solid, solid eight. I've Woo! told Team Riot, they've all got to go do the Z race at some point this week because we're going to be rocking the Tartan in the last race for ZRL. I know we're probably breaking a whole lot of rules that we should be wearing the same jersey, but – we're rocking the tartan. We're all in for worlds, and uh, we're pretty excited about it. I think uh, on this, I think it's the same way people feel about plaid. You know, like where the way that we talk mm -hmm. about plaid here in the USA, it's very polarizing. We only really wear it in like the fall. It feels like here, yeah. it's kind of like a you know, go out and with your hatchet and a big beard and a hat on and chop wood and wear plaid. I don't know if that's how people yep. feel about Tartan too, but all right, find out training plan <laughs> socks. Uh, what do you want? What, what, why did you pick these? What's up with okay. these things? So this is actually uh, kind of a revelation to me as I was on a group ride and I saw this guy with these socks and on the back, they even look quite cool too. They've got kind of this geometric circle pattern like you can see it there really cool colors and i messaged the group and you know it's a group of like a hundred so they're probably like what is this girl talking about but i was like you there with the pink socks what are they and he actually came back straight away and was like oh these are the fondo training plan socks and what i thought was super cool about it was i actually went in and like there's a there's a website which shows you all of the unlocks um there are a whole lot of awesome socks you can unlock by doing the training plans, which I didn't know. I've never done as with training plan. Um, so I might actually do the Fondo training plan just to get these socks. And then they've got like couch to 10K, all the different training plans unlock different socks and they all are actually really cool. So yeah, there we go. If you're uh, looking to do a training plan, um, and this isn't an advertisement for training plans, it's literally just the socks all look really cool and um yeah there was a revelation to me that you could unlock socks doing that nice very cool well see and that's what we need we need those kind those are the exclusive and that's the only reason why i'm not really digging the tartan kit right this second to be honest is because <gasps> i am just uh 
rebel, okay, at heart. I just don't, <laughs> I just don't want to do what everybody else is doing. I just don't like fitting in in the crowd. I don't want to like everybody else is doing it. I'm doing something else. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not all about. I'm, I'm just not all about that. So, but if there's something exclusive that you can earn and stand out with, give me that. I'm all <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You go get some of those fun fondo socks then. I'm gonna go get some fondo <laughs> socks. I need my I need my golden dragon. All right. Well, that is going to be it. What for us on the wrap? Uh, Anna, what do you got coming up for you over the next week for training or zwifting or other things related? Yeah, I do. A quick shout out to um, I got sent this by a, a watcher of the show is that they've got a and this is fashion related bike MS has got a kit unlock this Sunday, 830 a.m. and 11 a.m. EST time. So you can get it's actually a pretty cool kit. So I'll try and put that on my socials. Oh, there we go. Uh, I actually quite like this kit. Um, so, yeah, I love a kit. Unlock. It looks pretty cool. Go actually, I have to agree. Yeah, it looks pretty so, cool. This, and is I just a, an this is a phone screen. recording of Anna's screen. <laughs> I think it yeah. Looks so it looks um, really good. Very... It looks really good, actually. I like it. Yeah, I love me some block colors. So go check that out. Nice and it's pairing for of the board. gloves there, too. I like the pairing of because those are some old school gloves. Those are some. Those are gloves you get at a pretty early level, actually. Go, go well with the whole yeah. kit. There so it's what you're doing on so Sunday. So what am I up to? Uh, no, I'm doing a 50k running race tomorrow. So oh, um, that's all. Yeah. No big. <laughs> yeah, no big. No big I was deal. thinking so about I'm you while I was training. And I was like, "What is Anna doing again? She's doing 50. Wasn't she tired from doing something or other? Like, I was tired, and I was like, Anna was tired recently too. Wait, she's going to do a 50k run race. What's happening? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm quite excited for that though. It'll be cool going down with a bunch of friends. Um, it's a really really beautiful part of the country. It's just through all these redwood forests and um, super stunning. Got got my nice trail running vibe going on. Got my you know little hydration pack with all my treats in there and the aid stations are all like little party stations with a full smorgasbord of food. So yeah, it's just gonna be a fun uh, weekend away doing some running, mostly for me, and then. Uh, Back in to see how I can pull up. Probably won't get on the bike again until ZRL. So I guess we'll see how those legs feel after a 50 k Oh, man. That sounds rough. That does sound rough. Good luck on that for last week in Scotland. Roland Highlands next week for ZRL. Be interesting to see how that plays out as well. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in for me next this over the next week. Just doing base and getting ready to hop on a plane to head on over to the UK for Worlds. Going to be doing a lot of... Building up my last week and a half. I got a little bit of sick. I'm not doing a restart on my base. I'm just going to act like nothing happened and just continue on with the program. So going to start racing a little bit. Gabby's next to me doing some sort of threshold workout. Maybe I'll try doing whatever. She's got a three-hour workout loaded up. We'll see what that's all about. Anyways, that's it for us. We've been live on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. You can check out the live stream that went out in video format and all those places. This is also a podcast. Just go ahead on any podcast platform that you listen to and download your podcast. Search The Rap and Zwift. You should find us really, really quickly. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This has been episode number 30 already, which has been absolutely awesome that we're 30 episodes in. We'll be back at you for episode 31. Anna will be doing productions while I'm in the UK, but we'll keep it at, coming at you. Episode 31, looking forward to Worlds, and Matt Gardner with us next week. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. As always, from me and Anna, right on.